Chapter 36 Transcendental Affection Servitude The transcendental mellow of affection has been accepted by authorities like Sridhar Swami as a perfectional stage of devotion. It is just above the humor of neutrality and is a requisite for the development of of the serving humor. In literature such as Nama Kamudi, this state of existence is accepted as continual affection for or attraction to Krishna. Authorities like Sukadev consider this stage of affection to be in the neutral stage, but in any case, this affection is relished by the devotees in different transcendental tastes, and therefore the general name for this state is affection, or pure affection, for Krishna. Devotees engaged in servitude are attached to Krishna in the affection of reverence. Some of the inhabitants of Gokula Vrindavan, as exhibited on earth, are attached to Krishna on this platform of affection and reverence. The inhabitants of Vrindavan used to say, quote, Krishna is always manifest before us with a complexion like a blackish cloud. He holds this wonderful flute in his lotus hands. He's dressed in yellow silks and be decked with a peacock feather on his head. When Krishna walks near Govardhan Hill with these personal features, all the inhabitants of the heavenly planets, as well as the inhabitants of this earth, feel transcendental bliss and consider themselves the eternal servants of the Lord. End quote. Sometimes the devotee becomes filled with the same awe and reverence by seeing a picture of Vishnu, who is dressed like Krishna and who has a similar complexion. The only difference is that Vishnu has four hands in which he holds the conch shell, the disc, the club, and the lotus flower. Lord Vishnu is always decorated with many valuable jewels, such as the Chandrakanta stone, and the Surya Kanta stone. In the Lalita Madhava by Rupa Goswami, there is the following statement by Dharuka, one of the servants of Krishna. Quote, Certainly Lord Vishnu is very beautiful with his necklace of Kastuba jewels, his four hands holding conch shell, disc, club, and lotus flower, and his dazzlingly beautiful jewelry. He is also very beautiful in his eternal position, riding upon the shoulder of Garuda. But now the same Lord Vishnu is present as the enemy of Kamsa, and by his personal feature, I am completely forgetting the opulence of Vaikuntha. End quote. Another devotee once said, quote, This Supreme Personality of Godhead, from whose bodily pores comes millions of universes permanently rising, who is the ocean of mercy, who is the owner of inconceivable energies, who is always equipped with all perfections, who is the origin of all incarnations, who is the attraction for all liberated persons. This very supreme personality of Godhead is the supreme controller, the supremely worshipable, all-cognizant, fully determined, fully opulent, the emblem of forgiveness, the protector of surrendered souls, munificent, true to his promise, expert, all-auspicious, powerful, religious, 
a strict follower of the scripture, the friend of the devotees, magnanimous, influential, grateful, reputable, respectable, full of all strength, and submissive to pure love. Surely he is the only shelter of devotees who are attracted to him by the affection of servitorship. End quote. The devotees of the Lord in servitude are divided into four classes. Appointed servants, such as Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, who are appointed to control over the material modes of passion and ignorance. Devotees in servitude, who are protected by the Lord. Devotees who are always associates. And devotees who are simply following in the footsteps of the Lord. In a conversation between Jambavati, one of Krishna's wives, and Kalindi, her friend, Jambavati inquired, Who is this personality circumambulating our Krishna? Kalindi replied, He is Ambikeya, the superintendent of all universal affairs. Then Jambavati inquired, Who is this personality who is trembling at the sight of Krishna? Kalindi replied, he is Lord Shiva. Then Jambavati inquired, Who is the person offering prayers? Kalindi replied, He is Lord Brahma. Jambavati then asked, Who is that person who has fallen on the ground and is offering respect to Krishna? Kalindi replied, He is Indra, the king of heaven. Jambavati next inquired, Who is this person who has come with the demigods and is laughing with them? Kalinda replied, He's my elder brother, Yamaraj, the superintendent of death. This conversation offers a description of all the demigods, including Yamaraj, who are engaged in services appointed by the Lord. They are called Adikrita Devata, or demigods appointed to particular types of departmental service. One resident of Vrindavan once told Lord Krishna, quote, My dear Krishna, O pleasure of Vrindavan, being afraid of this material existence, we've taken shelter of you, for you can completely protect us. We're well aware of your greatness. As such, we have given up our desire for liberation and have taken complete shelter under your lotus feet since we have heard about your ever-increasing transcendental love. We have voluntarily engaged ourselves in your transcendental service. End quote. This statement is by a devotee who is under the protection and shelter of Lord Krishna. Upon being chastised by Krishna's constant kicking on his head, Kaliya, the black snake of the Yamuna, came to his senses and admitted, quote, My dear Lord, I've been so offensive unto you, but still you're so kind, you have marked my head with the impressions of your lotus feet. End quote. This also is an instance of one's taking shelter under the lotus feet of Krishna. In the Aparad Bhajana, a pure devotee expresses his feelings. Quote, My dear Lord, I'm ashamed to admit before you that I have carried out the orders of my masters, named lust, anger, avarice, illusion, and envy. Sometimes I have carried out their orders in a way most abominable, 
Yet, in spite of my serving them so faithfully, they're neither satisfied nor are they kind enough to give me relief from their service. They're not even ashamed of taking service from me in that way. My dear Lord, O head of the Yadu dynasty, now I've come to my senses, and I'm taking shelter of your lotus feet. Please engage me in your service. End quote. This is another instance of surrendering and taking shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. There are many instances in the various Vedic writings of persons who were aspiring after liberation by speculative knowledge, but gave up this process in order to take complete shelter under the lotus feet of Krishna. Examples of such persons are the Brahmins, headed by Shanaka in the forest of Namasharanya. Learned scholars accept them as devotees, having complete wisdom. There is a statement in the Hari Bhakti Suddhodaya in which these great Brahmins and sages, headed by Shanaka Rishi, told Sutta Goswami, quote, My dear great soul, just see how wonderful it is, although as human beings we're contaminated with so many taints of material existence. Simply by our conversing with you about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we are now gradually decrying our desire for liberation. End quote. There's a footnote after Namasharanya, and that footnote reads, These are the Brahmins to whom Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken by Sutta Goswami, as described in the author's Srimad Bhagavatam, Volume 1, Chapter 1. End footnote. In Padyavali, a devotee says, quote, Persons who are attached to speculative knowledge for self-realization, who have decided that the supreme truth is beyond meditation, and who have thus become situated in the modes of goodness, let them peacefully execute their engagement. As for us, we're simply attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is by nature so pleasing, who possesses a complexion like a black cloud, who is dressed in yellow garments, and who has beautiful lotus-like eyes. We wish only to meditate upon him. End quote. Those who are from the very beginning of their self-realization attached to devotional service are called sevanista. Sevanista means simply attached to devotional service. The best examples of such devotees are Lord Shiva, King Indra, King Bahulasva, King Ishvaku, Shrutadev, and Pundarik. One devotee says, quote, My dear Lord, your transcendental qualities attract even the liberated souls and carry them to the assembly of devotees where your glories are constantly chanted. Even great sages who are accustomed to live in solitary places are also attracted by the songs of your glory. And observing all your transcendental qualities, I have also become attracted and have decided to dedicate my life to your loving service. End quote. In the city of Dwarka, the following devotees are known as Krishna's close associates. Uddhava, Daruka, Satyaki, Shrutadev, Satrajit, Nanda, Upananda, and Bhadra. All of these personalities remain with the Lord as his secretaries, but still they are sometimes engaged in his personal service. Among the Kuru dynasty, Bhisma, Maharaj Parikshit, 
and Vidura are also known as close associates of Lord Krishna. It is said, quote, All the associates of Lord Krishna have lustrous bodily features. Their eyes are just like lotus flowers. They have sufficient power to defeat the strength of the demigods, and the specific feature of their persons is they're always decorated with valuable ornaments. End quote. When Krishna was in the capital of Indraprastha, someone addressed him thus. Quote, My dear Lord, your personal associates, headed by Uddhava, are always awaiting your order by standing at the entrance gate of Dwarka. They're mostly looking on with tears in their eyes, and in the enthusiasm of their service, they are not afraid even of the devastating fire generated by Lord Shiva. They are souls simply surrendered unto your lotus feet. End quote. Out of the many close associates of Lord Krishna, Uddhava is considered the best. The following is a description of him. Quote, His body is blackish, like the color of Yamuna River, and it is similarly as cool. He's always decorated with flower garlands, first used by Lord Krishna, and he is dressed with yellow silk clothing. His two arms are just like the bolts of a door. His eyes are just like lotus flowers. And he is the most important devotee amongst all the associates. Let us therefore offer our respectful obeisances unto Uddhava's lotus feet. End quote. Uddhava has described the transcendental qualities of Sri Krishna as follows. Quote, Lord Sri Krishna, who is our master and worshipful deity, who is the controller of Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, controller of the whole universe as well, accepts the controlling orders of Ugrasena, his grandfather. He is the proprietor of millions of universes, but still he begged a little land from the ocean. And although he is just like an ocean of wisdom, still he sometimes consults me. He is so great and magnanimous, yet he is engaged in his different activities just like an ordinary person. End quote. Those who are constantly engaged in the personal service of the Lord are called anugas, or followers. Examples of such followers are Sutrandra, Mandana, Stamba, and Sutamba. They are all inhabitants of the city of Dwarka, and they are dressed and ornamented like the other associates. The specific services entrusted to the Anugas are varied. Mandana always bears the umbrella over the head of Lord Krishna. Suchandra is engaged in fanning the white chamara bunch of hair. And Sutamba is engaged in supplying betel nuts. All of them are great devotees. As there are Anugas in Dwarka, so there are many Anugas in Vrindavan also. The names of the Anugas in Vrindavan are as follows. Raktaka, Patrika, Patri, Madhukanta, Madhuvrata, Rasala, Suvilasa, Premakanda, Marakanda, Ananda, Chandrahasa, Payoda, Bakula, Rasada, and Sarada. Descriptions of the bodily features of the Anugas in Vrindavan are given in the following statement. Quote, let us offer our respectful obeisances unto the constant associates of the son of Maharaj Nanda. They always stay in Vrindavan 
and their bodies are decorated with garlands of pearls and with bangles and bracelets of gold. Their colors are like black bees and the golden moon, and they're dressed just to suit their particular special bodily features. Their specific duties can be understood from the statement by Mother Yasoda, who said, Bakula, please cleanse the yellowish dress of Krishna. Varida, you just flavor the bathing water with the guru scent. And Masala, you just prepare the betel nuts. You can all see that Krishna is approaching. There is dust overhead, and the cows can be seen very distinctly. End quote. Among all the Anugas, Raktaka is considered to be the chief. The description of his bodily features is as follows. Quote, Among all the Anugas, Raktaka is considered to be the chief. The description of his bodily features is as follows. Quote, he wears yellow clothing, and his bodily color is just like newly grown grass. He's very expert in singing, and is always engaged in the service of the son of Maharaj Nanda. Let us all become the followers of Raktaka in offering transcendental loving service to Krishna. End quote. An example of the attachment felt by Raktaka toward Lord Krishna can be understood from his statement to Rasada. Quote, Just hear me. Please place me so that I may always be engaged in the service of Lord Krishna, who has now become famous as the lifter of the Govardhan Hill. End quote. The devotees of Krishna engaged in his personal service are always very cautious because they know that becoming personal servitors of Lord Krishna is not an ordinary thing. A person who offers respect even to the ants engaged in the service of the Lord becomes eternally happy. So what is there to say of one who offers Krishna direct service? Raktaka once said within himself, quote, Not only is Krishna my worshipful and servable Lord, but also the girlfriends of Krishna, the gopis, are equally worshipable and servable by me. And not only the gopis, but anyone who is engaged in the service of the Lord is also worshipable and servable by me. I know that I must be very careful not to become overly proud that I am one of the servitors and devotees of the Lord. End quote. From this statement, one can understand that the pure devotees who are actually engaged in the service of the Lord are always very cautious and are never overly proud of their service. This mentality of the direct servitor of Krishna is called Durya. According to expert analytical studies of the direct associates of the Lord, Srila Rupa Goswami has divided these into three classes, namely Durya, Dira, and Vira. Raktaka is classified among the Durya or those who are always attached to serve the most beloved gopis. One dearer associate of Krishna is the son of Satyabhama's nurse. Satyabhama is one of the queens of Lord Krishna in Dwarka. When she was married to Krishna, the son of her nurse was allowed to go with her because they had lived together from childhood as brother and sister. So this gentleman, the son of Satyabhama's nurse, used to live with Krishna as his brother-in-law. And sometimes as brother-in-law, he used to play jokes with Krishna. 
He once addressed Krishna in this way. Quote, My dear Krishna, I never tried to gain the favor of the goddess of fortune who is married to you, but still I'm so fortunate that I'm considered one of the members of your house, the brother of Satchabama. End quote. This same person once expressed his pride, declaring, quote, Lord Baladev may be a great enemy of Pralambashura, but I have nothing to worry about from him. And as far as Pradumna is concerned, I have nothing to take from him, because he is simply a boy. Therefore, I do not expect anything from anyone else. I simply expect the favorable glance of Krishna upon me. And so I am not even afraid of Satchabama, who is so dear to Krishna. End quote. In the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 20th chapter, 25th verse, King Prithu addresses the Lord, saying, quote, My dear Lord, it may happen that the goddess of fortune becomes dissatisfied with my work, or I may even have some misunderstanding with her, but I will not mind this, because I have full confidence in you. You are always causelessly merciful to your servants, and you consider even their menial service to be very much advanced. So I have confidence that you will accept my humble service, although it is not worthy of being recognized. My dear Lord, you are self-sufficient. You can do anything you like without the help of anyone else. So, even if the goddess of fortune is not satisfied with me, I know you will always accept my service anyway. End quote. Devotees attached to the transcendental loving service of the Lord may be described either as surrendered souls, as souls advanced in devotional knowledge, or as souls completely engaged the transcendental loving service. Such devotees are called, respectively, neophyte, perfect, and eternally perfect. 